Father, we thank you for this morning. We just want to praise you. We want to worship you. We want to adore you. Thank you for fresh manna from heaven. Thank you for the word you prepared for your people. Lord, I'm trusting you that no one will leave this place the way he or she had come. Let there be encounter that will cause transformation. Let there be revelation that will cause a revolution in people's lives. Father, thank you. You showed me already that you've taken them to the fitting room. And all clothes are being removed. All clothes of, of all clothes are being removed of, of limitation, of dead, of sickness, of disease, whatever it is. That, those old things they are being removed from their lives, and you are putting on them new clothing, new shining clothing of your faithfulness, your goodness, your blessings, your loving kindness that is better than life. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship and we adore you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. This morning I'll continue on the message I started last week Sunday. Which uh, I entitled, Crossing Over to Take Over Part 2. Crossing Over to Take Over Part 2. Fulfilling your prophetic destiny. Crossing Over to Take Over Part two, fulfilling your prophetic destiny. And I'll take us to the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, chapter number four. And we'll start to read from verse number 35 to 41. Mark chapter four, verse number 35 to 31. I mean, yeah, to 41. It reads, and I quote, on the same day. And I told us last Sunday, what same day? We read 33 to 34, where the Bible mentioned there that with many parables he spoke to them. And without parables, he did not speak unto them. What are parables? Parables are heavenly stories or earthly stories with heavenly meanings. So Jesus spoke to them with so many parables. He taught them the word that same day when evening had come. He said to them, let us cross over to the other side. The TPT version says, at night, in the evening. Or we can say at midnight. Evening means the end of a day. The end of a day is also the beginning of another one. The end of a year is also what? An indication of the beginning of another year. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. So evening had come. The end of the day. The end of that season for them. He said to them, let us cross over to the other side. 36. Now when they had left the multitudes, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. 37, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat onto the boat, so that it was already filling. What did he say to them? What did he say to them? I can't hear you. What did he say to them? Let us cross over to the other side. But now, as they took the step, so if they had remained on the other side, they would not have experienced the storm. Hello. So as they entered into the boat, obeying the instruction, what happened? They encountered the storm. And the Bible says a great wind storm. So not a normal storm that probably they were used to. Or else, look look at it, verse 38. Look at the response. But he was in the stand asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? These are experienced fishermen. Peter had been fishing for years. He didn't start to fish just yesterday. Not just a new kid out of the world, out of the block. So he's been on what? Rivers, ocean, fishing. But he encountered the storm that made him what? His knees to quiver. And he ran to Jesus. Well, let me say something. What did Jesus say to them in the first instance? Let us what? 
Don't ever forget this. Listen to me very clearly. Don't let anyone disturb you. Anytime the prophetic word is released, the prophetic word will do two things. Number one, it will bring illumination, meaning direction, and then it will bring what? Not just illumination, it will also bring what? The ability for you to fulfill the word. The prophetic word will bring guidance, and it also brings what the strength to carry it out. Amen. So the moment the words were released, illumination was released, now crossed over to the other side. At the same time, you know what happened? That word became what their boat was traveling upon. Hello. That word became what? The boat. So as long as Jesus will be in that boat with them, it's practically impossible for the world to sink. You can stand on the word. I'm telling you, anytime I'm looking for the word, what is God saying about the matter? What is God saying about it? It does not matter the storm. As long as I have the word, I'm, I will hold on to the word. You know, the challenge is this. Storms normally come to take your eyes away from the word and focus on the storm. On the same day, when evening had come, he said, let us cross over to the other side. 36. They left the multitude behind. 37. They encountered the great windstorm, a fierce storm, and the waves beat onto the boat so that it was already filling. 38. But it was to understand asleep on a pillow. Why was he able to sleep in the middle of a storm? Why? Why was he the only one sleeping in the middle of a storm? Why? I know you like to study the Bible. Why? Because the Prince of Peace agreed. Because, uh, yes, definitely he remains the Prince of Peace. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. But why was he able to sleep in the midst of the storm? He was settled in him. Somebody said, oh, because uh, Jesus, you know, God knows the end from the beginning. Absolutely. There's no, but, you know, here, he was not sleeping as God. He was sleeping because God neither sleep nor slumber. It was, he lived here as a man, like you and I, anointed by the Holy Ghost. So he was able to sleep because he knew the moment God said it, what is what? It is settled. If you connect your faith with the prophetic word, nothing on earth can stop the manifestation. Faith is the breed that connects eternity to time. The challenge is when the world comes and you say, how is it going to happen? And you're trying to think, and you're trying to think, and you're trying to calculate. You can't calculate God. Hello, somebody. You can't calculate God. That's the challenge. Oh, how will he do it now? And you're not, how will he do it now? If I calculate, no, no, no. <laughs> Praise God. He spoke to us last Sunday. You know, we're getting ready to move into... Uh, uh, to sort out the issue of our building. He said, I'm no longer, I'm giving you a campus. Somebody, campus. And he said, on one side of the, there will be a building. It's called the studio. On another place, there will be another building. The school. And then another place, you find the, you find the auditorium. It's a layers of, you know, different places. And then you start to, cut. how much would that cost? Stop calculating. Start, start to believe. Amen. Start to believe. Because there's one thing that is settled in my spirit. We will never lack the finances. It may take a bit of time, but we will not lack the finances that we need to do the thing that God wants us to do. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I say praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I told you many years ago, I said people that will be you know, standing for election, people that will be empty, they will come here. Did we not see David Wood coming to us last election and said, hey, I'm here. Will you be able to support? Did he not come? Did they not show up? How many are still coming? But was in the stand asleep on the pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Verse 39. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, what did he say to the sea? Peace be still. We have looked at that and the Bible study. I won't go into that. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He now turned to them. He said to them, why are you so what? Fearful. You know what fear is? 
Fear is faith contaminated. That's fear. Fear is faith contaminated. You go and look at scriptures. Where did fear, <laughs> how did fear come into be? When the world, when sin came into the world, suddenly fear replaced faith. And today it's grown so big. Why? Because of, because of sin. He said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I have no faith. Somebody said, who doesn't fear? You have a point there. But the key thing is that don't yield to it. Don't yield to it. Situations will come that want to go. What is this? What do I do? Don't yield to it. Don't yield to it. Don't allow it to start to take over you so that you start to meditate on fear. And instead of Med instead of you meditating on what God has said, you are meditating on the fear. And you know what will that bring to you? Worry. And worry will break down your physical body. And the fear. And he said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Why did the storm come? What was the purpose of the storm? What? First, to what? Grow them in process. Now let's go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. From verse number 1. Mark chapter 5. Then they came to the other side. Everybody said the other side. Did they get to the other side? The wind was what? The storm was what? So what? So fierce. Terrible, challenging. But did they get to the other side? I've come to announce to you, no matter the storm. <laughs> I said, no matter the storm. The storm might be blowing so huge. It might be so strong. It might look as if nothing will. It might look as if you are not going to make it. You will get to the other side. I prophesy over you. You are getting to the other side. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They came to the other side. To the country of the gatherings. Note this, gatherings. I'm going to get to that. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. Verse number three. Who had his dwelling among tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. And because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day. He was in the mountains and in the tombs. Crying out and cutting himself with stones. Verse number 6. When he saw Jesus from afar. He ran and worshipped him. Who taught him how to worship? He was what? A madman. This one is referred to as the madman of Gatherer. The gathering madman. Who taught him how to worship? I will show you today. When I go into the lessons from the story. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Verse number 8. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Oh, sometimes people are performing deliverance and you are battling with demons. You don't need to battle with demons. Just know the authority you carry and you speak to demons. I remember years ago, a friend of mine was going to talk. He said, he was going to minister to somebody. Who was who said, please, can you leave him? You don't please Satan. You don't please demons. You command him to leave. I know it was being polite, but you're not you don't have to be polite to demons. They don't understand that language. The only language they understand is authority. Then he asks him, what is your name? And he answers saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Then verse 10, and he begged him honestly that he would not send them out of the country. This is the reason why sometimes it's difficult to what? It's difficult to remove sometimes when demons are oppressing people, or when you have, because you also have territorial demons. 
there's nothing, anything taking place in the natural is what has been orchestrated in the spirit realm. If you have people who are not interested in the gospel, who wants to rather go to the beach, I remember the story of the man. He was a bishop back in Africa. He was a bishop when they were in the refugee camp. And he got here. This, this person was sharing the story with me. And he got to Australia. And he called this other person. He said, oh, can we go out for a picnic? And the person said, oh, but this is Sunday. We need to go to church. He said, this is Australia. You know, this is Australia. You just go. I said, but Bishop, what happened to Bishop? Bishop has gone back. He came into a different climate. He couldn't handle it. What happened is this. He's gone back. Bishop has gone back. Bishop will need to repent. That's why it's not by title. Hello, somebody? It's not by what? It's not by title. It's by grace. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. Demons are territorial. Authority is territorial. You can just... <laughs> authority is territorial. Territorial. I can tell you very, very clear, this is a destiny train. We did not just, okay, let's look for, let's try and meet needs in Mel No, no, no. We were sent here. We were sent because authority is territorial. December 15, 2006, I was ministering in Joburg, South Africa. Before then, June 27, 1999, he spoke to me. I'm sending you to Australia. The same way that you left the South to move to the North, Northern part of, you are going to leave Nigeria and move to Australia. December 20, 20, 2006, we are on our way here. I said, Lord, Australia is big. Where should we go to? We can't just, this is a big nation. He said, I'm sending you to Melbourne. I got to Melbourne. I was in my prayers. I knelt down before him. I said, where do I go in Melbourne? He said, go to Kilo Downs. I had Kilo Downs from his mouth for the very first time. For the very, very first time. For the very first time, he said, go. He said, go to Kilo Downs Community Center. I opened it. Uh, I looked at, what is that big book? That, uh, Melway. I took Melway. We were driving. How do we get to the place? I thought Kilo Downs was have to drive about 30 minutes. I was staying in Hillside. I, I was ready that we were going to drive for another 45 minutes to get to Kilo Downs. I was going. We didn't know it was just about a few minutes away. And then turn right, and then turn left, and then we got to Kilo Downs. I saw there, uh, uh, Secretary Louis Staffis. Okay, number, if you need, call Louis Staffis. I got his number and I called Louis Staffis. Oh, we need a hall in Kilo Downs Center. He said, there's no, there's no place everywhere is taken. But he said, go to Kilo Downs. Go to Kilo Downs. And I, re go, <laughs> I called him. I said, okay. When I was about to drop, he said, but you can do something. Why don't you send in your application so that if eventually there's an opening, we will consider you. I said, no problem. That's a good deal. We'll send in the application. And we did. And we started waiting. We started praying. We, I called him again. Oh, pastor, sorry, no place. Called him again two months after. Oh, sorry, pastor, no place. I remember at least two Sundays, we'll come down to the area. We'll stand in front. Father, thank you. You said, I believe. You said, I didn't know that song then. We de were declaring the word. And then suddenly he said, Oh, uh, Pastor. Can you come for a meeting? I would say, yeah, we'll come for a meeting. And we went to the, to, to, to the room outside there. He said, can you manage this place? Man manage this place? How many were we in church? Myself, my wife, three daughters. And then, thank God for all for Minister Wale is there. Um, I mean, is, is, yes, he's there sitting down there. And, and, and then, oh, yes. Okay, how many Monday? And I said, okay, we will consider it. And then we will. 
before I got home, I called him. <laughs> we will take. <laughs> oh, 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 take. Oh, take. He said, but pastor, you need to, because this place can only take, the maximum is just about, if you manage put everything there, 50. 50? That, that big number? Well, he said it. He said it. And do you know what? From that little room, we move into the big one. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And not only that, they said they are looking for those that have become members of the world, management committee of the entire place. I put up my hands and they said, yes, we've been looking for you. Come and be ma- From what? From Africa, I became member of management committee. We now became those who determine those who come to the place and those who <laughs> not. We are the only one being managed by a committee in the entire western suburbs, if not the entire Melbourne. Then the council saw that how much do they have in their account? We had over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the account that were managed. They say, eh? You are the only one we must equalize everything. It was not the management they were interested in, the money that were interested in. They took over the management and of course took over the money. Because we had them in the account, managed by four or five of us. Took over it. Why did I say that? The word. The word. When God gives the word, you know, and then it looks as if nothing is happening. Don't forget, you say, <laughs> I believe, you say. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Up where you say. At once, Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirit went out and entered the swine. And there were about 2,000. And they had run violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Verse 20. So those who, verse 14. Those who fed the swine fled. And they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Fifteen. They came to Jesus, saw that the one who had been demon possessed and had, and had the legion sitting and clothed. What happened? He encountered Jesus <laughs> in his right mind. And they were what? Afraid. The same man who nobody could bind. The same man that nobody could talk. The same man that was living in tomb. The same man. Something that happened to him. They saw he was not sitting down. He was not, ba- he was not fighting anybody. He was not fearing anything. He was sitting down what? With his right mind in place. Why? He encountered Jesus. Those who saw it told him what had happened to him. And had been, who oh, had been the demon possessed. And about, can I tell you something? God didn't give him the name demon possessed. Men gave that. Use that. Oh yes. Praise God. And about the swine, and about the swine, verse number seventeen. And then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. Why? Because they saw what they have never seen before. <laughs> the, verse eighteen. Then when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. Nineteen. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, "Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you." And how he has had compassion on you. 20. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him. And all were four lessons I want to bring up from this story. But before I do that, I want to say this. Don't ever forget this. When it comes to interpretation of scriptures, there are three dimensions. Three dimensions to interpreting scriptures. Number one, the first dimension is this, that the story happened. There's nothing in scriptures that is, you find that it's just story, story, storyteller. Uh, when you get to heaven in fullness of time, this man who eventually what? His name was not named, but you get to know you are the one in Mark chapter 5. This happened. It wasn't just something that somebody concocted. It wasn't just something that somebody put together. 
This is not what do they call that book? When they, they fiction. This is not fiction. This is not fiction writing. This happened. So anything you see in scriptures, you find it there, a story told, whatever names mentioned, th- those people actually existed at a particular time. They lived. So when you are reading it, so Bible is not a story of fictions, of fictional characters. But it, this is the, but this is the challenge there. Many people in the church, and I dare say, that many Bible schools have stopped at the first dimension. So just talking about the historical dimension of scriptures. Hello. Forgetting that history is history. Not just, don't, 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 we're not supposed to stop there. Yes, it happened. This man existed. This gathering man lived. But that is just a part of the story. That's the first dimension of interpretation. What is the second dimension that you can apply to yourself today? That if this man can be healed, that you what? That we also can receive our what? Healing. That if God can cause a turnaround, if encountering Jesus brought a turnaround in this man's life, the same thing can happen to us today. And the charismatic church has stopped here. That yes, if God can heal yesterday, God can see heal today, and God will continue to heal absolutely, applying what happened in scriptures to today. But don't stop there. Hello, don't stop there. Second dimension, the third dimension is what is called the dominion dimension, the kingdom dimension, whereby the scriptures are opened so that not only do you have understanding, then not only do you have clarity, you can walk in what? The kingdom dimension. What exactly is the message there? What is God saying to us today about the same thing that took place years ago? And that is where I want to take us today. Four lessons. Number one. Number one is this. The Bible says there was what? A gray storm. And they became fearful because of the storm. But Jesus was in the boat with them. And he spoke to the what? He rebuked the wind. Because he went to the foundation of the storm. Because the wind was the one producing the storm. He rebuked it, and then the wind ceased. But this is the lesson there. Did they cross over to the other side? In spite of the storm? Storms come. Storms. Sometimes you will encounter storms because of what where God is taking you. Don't allow storms to take your eyes away. From the war that he has given to you. Don't allow storms. In fact, the greater the storm, the greater the lifting. The greater the storm, the greater the promotion. The greater the mountain that you need to encounter, the greater where God wants to take you. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. The moment you see the opposition, that great opposition. In fact, many times when there's a destiny, a major destiny to fulfill, be ready for opposition. And God is always calling us to another level. And I'm telling you, with a new level, sometimes rises new devils. But if you're not aware, when you're facing challenges, when we are facing opposition, most people would back down. Most people give up. Most people say, this is too much. Oh yes, he's never asking you to do this in your own strength. You need his grace. Why don't you ask him for grace? So the lesson is very, very clear there. God will take us through process in getting to the destiny he has for us. Hello. I wish you can just wake up and then land in that destiny. Who doesn't want that? 
Who doesn't want to just, to just get to university? Okay, where are you? I'm now in uh, La Trobe or I'm in RMIT. What course are you reading? I'm reading medical engineering. You just, and then maybe the following day, you just say, I've passed out now. Where am I certificate? Who doesn't, who wouldn't like that? Maybe I should remind you of the son of one of my good friends, Pastor Dave, you know, Isaac. He, he was very small, the youngest of all the children. He saw the, all the sisters going to school. He started crying, I want to go to school. I said, wait, wait, he said, I want to go to school. Eventually, I think he got to about four years. They said, we'll enroll you in school now. And he started going with them. After first time, they, <laughs> you've heard this. After first time, they now said, Isaac, we're going to second time. He said, no, no, I'm not going to school again. I finished school. I finished school. They said, ah, why did you finish school? He said, no, no, I'm not. I finished. I finished. He said, time has finished. I finished the school. I'm not going again. You know, when it came to being what? They have to wake him up in the morning. Oh, go and have your bath. Oh, oh, oh this school business. <laughs> and then by the time they finished, it was like, I've, let me just stay at home now. I'm, not, I'm no longer going anywhere. Everybody wants it. But you know, he has not promised us going through life on a flowery bed of ease. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he didn't stop there. He said, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. So when you face, you are facing opposition. When you're facing challenges, know that there's something, especially when you know that the God has spoken to you about it. Oh yes, there's a lifting, there's a promotion that is what are just around the corner because destiny will be contested. Hello somebody, destiny will be what? Contested. Stand on the word. Learn to stand on the wall. Hello. And when it seems as if the storm is so fierce, only lenting. Somebody is angry. There's something is trying to prevent you from landing into. And that thing, if you're able to stand, it will be so glorious. You'll be so thankful that you stood. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lesson number two. Lesson number two. Let's go back to the beginning. Verse number one. Lesson number two. They came to the other country. To the side of the sea, to the country of what? The gatherings. This man is referred to in scripture as the madman of what? Or the gathering demoniac. Who was this man? Was he a stranger in Israel? Hello, somebody. Who? This gathering demoniac. Who was this man? Was he a stranger in Israel? Talk to me, somebody. Who was he? Are you ready for it? Can I open it up for you? This man, the word gatherings, simply what? Gathering. A descendant of a tribe of God. God. And God was the seventh son of Jacob by who? Zilpah. So he wasn't. This man was not a stranger. A descendant that has now been oppressed by the enemy. Descendant of God. The seventh son of Jacob. Can I show you something from scriptures? Let's go there. Genesis chapter number 30 from verse number 1. Genesis 30 from verse number 1. Now when Rachel saw that she bought Jacob and no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, give me children or else I what? I die. And then let's continue. Verse number two. And Jacob's anger was what? Aroused. Let's continue to read. Aroused and then what? Am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? Verse number three. And she said, here is my maid, Bilha. Go into her and she will be a child on my knees that I may also what? Have children by her. It was allowed then. Amen. Praise God. It's not allowed now. Hello, somebody. <laughs> then she gave him Bilha maid as wife and Jacob went into her. Verse number five. 
And Bilhah conceived and bought Jacob a son. Called what? Yes, verse number 6. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case and has also heard my voice and given me a son and therefore she shall, she, therefore she called his name what? Dan. And Rachel's maid, Bilhah, conceived again and bought Jacob a second son. Verse number 8. Then Rachel said, with great wrestling, I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name what? Naphtali. Verse number 9. Then Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, and she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as what? Wife. <laughs> and Leah's maid, Zilpah, bore Jacob a son. That is why I keep on telling you, did Jacob plan for this? Does this look like a mess? Out of your, your mess, God will bring out a message in Jesus' name. Then Leah said, look at it. Leah said, a troop comes, so he called his name Dad. A troop comes. It was the seventh son of Jacob. Seven is God's number of what? Perfection. That this man, the gathering, eventually, going through process, will arrive at what? At a place called perfection. A symbol of the seven-day church. The church might look like, you know, look at the way it is. Look at this, look at, look, look at this last census. When I got to Australia, the number of Christians in this nation was how many? They said 60, 67. The second census we had, it dropped to 65, those claiming to be Christians. And then the last census, you know how, you know how many? 45%. From 65 to 45 percent. But you know, I read something that gladdens my heart. You know the place where they have the highest number of Christians in what? In Victoria? You know the place where we are? Around the, uh, yes, around, around, uh, uh, around this area, from the airport to this area. That's where you have the highest number of Christians in Australia. The, the, our electorate, you know, I hold the chair of the Fraser Federal Electorate. The Fraser Electorate was also the second and out of 11 in the entire Australia that voted against gay marriage. Gay marriage. This electorate. This electorate. And that's where you have the highest number of Christians in the entire Victoria. Victoria. Let's continue to pray. I'm going to push back this darkness. Push back this darkness. Push back this darkness. They said it. But you know, we've been saying, they said, I believe. But regarding the censor, they said, we do not believe. We do not agree. So therefore, it is not what? It is not done. But let me tell you about God. It was the seventh son of Jacob. Seventh is God's number of what? Perfection. But you don't enter into perfection without going through a process. He's talking about the church. The church, the end time church. They will go through process. It might be looking like a mess now. It might be looking like what is happening to the church. It seems so powerless. God is taking the church through process. But by the time you, it will finish with you. It will finish with the church. It's going to be what? Glorious. It's going to be what? Beautiful. It's going to be what? Powerful. Because God is not, Jesus is not coming back for a church with wrinkles. Somebody said, really? Oh yes, what did Leah call the name? God. What does the name God mean? A troop, what? A troop comes. A troop comes. You know, Jacob is a very interesting person. Because, you know, all his children were named by his wives. None of them was named by their dad. All of them. All of them. You know the only one that Jacob named? Benjamin. But even that, he changed the name. What was the name that Rachel gave him? Benoni. What's the meaning of Benoni? Son of my sorrow. But you know, Benjamin will be a type of Christ. The one afflicted with sorrow. And then Jacob said, no, Rachel, you don't have full understanding of this. This is, will not just be Benoni, it will become Benjamin, the son of my right hand. A type of Jesus, a man afflicted with sorrow, that after resurrection will sit at the right hand of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me take you to Genesis 49. 
from verse number one. I will, so that we can see the story. Genesis 49. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together that I may tell you what shall be for you in the world in the last days. Are we in the last days? Hello? Are we in the last days, somebody? <laughs> Jacob said, Let me tell you what will be for you in the last days. Gather together and hear you, sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel, your, your father. Verse 19. Let's go to verse 19 because of time. God, a troop shall what? Shall what? The gathering. When it was a gathering demonia, what was stamping upon him? Legions, a troop was stamping upon him. But at the end, what will happen? I said, what will happen? What will happen? He shall triumph at last. We will triumph at last. This church of the living God will triumph at last. The lesson has not been heard concerning your story. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God, a true, shall trump upon him, for he shall triumph at what? At last. The gathering, the, did he triumph at last? So, did he triumph at last? Number three. Number three lesson. The Bible says he got to Jesus and he did what? Worship him. Why did he learn to worship? Because he's always been part of the world. He wasn't a stranger. He was trampled upon by a troop. That eventually Jesus came to deliver him so that he could now what? Become triumphant. He learned worship. That is why worship is a major key if you're going to enter into fulfillment. The Bible says he worshipped him. When we're talking about worship, what do we think about? We think about we think about that. Was there any did he say, let the musicians come? Hello? Let the musician come. Let the drummer come. Let, where is Harry? Let Harry come and play. Pa, 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 pa. Is that what he, what he did there? The Bible says he worshipped him. What did he do? Because worship has nothing. In fact, equipments, musicians, are what? When you have equipments, when you all do simply, they are just what? They aid worship. It's not worship. It's not worship. Worship must come from your inside. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a journey. The destination is God. That is worship. It's not about the music at all. There was no music playing when this man worshipped. There was no guitarist there. There was no, well, there was no what? If worship was just the song, then Michael Jackson must be a very powerful worshipper. Very powerful worshipper. No, but worship is not. Worship is far, far bigger than that. No wonder. The Bible said he worshipped and Jesus responded to him. This is what we've said this is a house of prayers. But you can't have a house of prayer without worship. That is why, you know, worship team, I need to come back to you. The time of praying and fasting needs to resume because God wants to take you to the next level. Next step, we start to write your own songs. God showed us that one of the buildings that will be in the campus will be a studio. What will studio be doing? We'll be producing, 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 producing. We need to prepare. Faith prepares. Are you listening? Faith prepares. So it's very, very important. And worship is not old. Hey, you need to prepare. You need to wait on God. God needs to direct you so that when you're worshiping. I was ministering at a minister's conference about two weeks ago. I told you about. The Lord spoke to them there. You know, when we get to the place where God is taking us, you know, laying of hands will reduce. Because while worship will be going on, people will be getting healed in the congregation. While worship is going on, things will be happening. Miracles will be happening. God will be touching people. He will be revealing dreams. He will be ch- things will be happening. Was it not during worship that he showed me here? I saw that you were, you were taken to like a fitting room and then the garments of filth, garments of whatever, lack, whatever it is, was just being removed and being replaced by new garments. That's what worship does. Hello, how do I possess my possession? You asked me the question on Thursday. Worship is a major key. Worship is a major key. To possess worship, we must become true worshippers. And listen, worship is what? It's not just the music. Thank God for the music. Thank God for the singing. Those things are just what? They are, they, what do they do? They just edit, but true worship comes from your inside. 
True worship is a destination. That destination is God. And that is why you can't, the songs cannot be going on. And, and then you do like this. No, you are not worshiping there. You are just standing by yourself. You can't, the, true worship cannot, you, 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 the, the worship songs cannot be going on. And then you are gisting. You are talking. And worship is going on. Maybe you are arriving late and you are still greeting people. Ah, how now? How are you? How was yesterday? No, no, no. You don't understand what worship is. You get there and you, 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 you focus on God because it's a time of encounter between you and God. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Yeah, because sometimes I see people, oh, how now? How are you? And they send you, hey, hello. And they, no, 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 no. That must change. That must change. When we are worshiping, everybody is focused. Everybody is concentrating. Everybody is worshiping him. Everybody is giving him praise. And you know, when our praises go off, his presence will descend. And when his presence descends, he will not leave you the way you are. That's what happened to the gathering demoniac when presence came in. It could not remain the way they are. Verse number 20. Uh, let me go there. Mark chapter 5, verse 20. After he got healed. Lesson number 4. Lesson number 4. When God has blessed you, when God has given you, with, you know, sometimes uh, when God has done something for you, what are you doing with it? Hello. Look at this man. He departed and began to proclaim it what? In Decapolis. What does that mean? The word Deca is the word ten. This man went and won ten cities for Jesus. Ten cities. This is exactly what the storm was trying to storm. So that Jesus will not cross over. And this man will not be converted. This man will not be healed. So that that entire region will not be affected by the message. But the storm cannot stop him. And storms cannot stop you too. If you hold on to the word. He began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him. And all what marveled. Mom, he became a missionary. He became an evangelist. He became someone that is, oh, he said, but I'm not being called to be an evangelist. Everybody has been called to do the work of an evangelist. But I don't know what to say to people. You don't, you have everything to say. Just share your testimonies with them. Look at what God has done for me. And this same God can do the same thing for you too. Four lessons. Go back. Sit down. Listen to this. In Bible, if God can transform this gathering demoniac, you know that your story can be totally transformed too. It does not matter how challenging. It doesn't matter how bad. It doesn't matter. I thank God for doctors. And we thank God that we have doctors here. We have even a surgeon here. And we respect what they say. But do you know what? They don't have the last final say. They don't have the last say. No, And nobody has the last say in your life. Jesus has the final say. Who has the final say? Jesus. Who has the final say? Jesus. Who has the final say? Jesus. That's why I thank God for Lucky. You know, he brought the child here. <laughs> he said, I said, I will go and see Pastor uh, to, to, to tell me. I don't know what will happen to this child. Maybe Pastor is closer to God than me. You also. <laughs> and they took the child to the hospital and they checked 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 and they found nothing. They said, What? The child has been sick all the time. But there's nothing because God has what? Stepped in. For the first time, he went back to where? Child care. And he came back. There was what? No sickness. And there won't be any in Jesus' name. He's totally free and delivered in the name of Jesus. He says, I believe. You say, it is done. Oh, my, my, my. Tell him to bring the storm. <laughs> say, bring the storm. I said, bring the storm. Bring the storm. Because the harder the storm, the greater the promotion. Oh, yeah. The greater the promotion. 
Years ago, I said to people, how I many was one great testimony? Every hand went up. How many people are ready for great storm? No hand went up. It doesn't work like that. The test will produce the word, the testimony. He is taking us as a church through some tests this day. And he's probably taking you through some tests soon. But be ready, be excited. Say, bring on the test. Bring on the test. Because your promotion is around the corner. Rise up, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I say, praise the name of the Lord. Give him praise. 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 Thank him for what the Lord has just done. Thank him again. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for his word to us. Thank him. Thank him. We give him praise. We give him praise. We give him worship. We give him adoration. Give him adoration. Give him praise. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his word to us. Hallelujah. Don't forget the four lessons this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, just thank him. Just thank him and receive the word in your life too. The word you have heard. Receive the prophetic word again. Thank him for the word. That is your portion. That is your Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship him. Father, we adore you. Who is like unto thee, O God? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, doing wonders, doing wonders, doing wonders, doing wonders, doing wonders. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established in our presence as your people we declare your mighty words oh blessed be the lord god almighty who loves and is and is to come, blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns forevermore. Father, as you have spoken to me, as you have put in my heart, I have delivered your word to your people. Lord, I pray, let them forever always remember this, that when storms are fierce, when the challenges seem so great, let them remember this, the Lord, that their promotion is just around the corner, especially when they receive the word from your mouth, when they are walking with you, when it seems to say, where, is, where are all this coming from? When did this appear from? But Lord, let them always remember that they are not alone. That you are with them in the situation, in the circumstance, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I want to thank you so much, O oh Lord my God, for this new clothing, for this new fitting. Thank you, Father, for what you have done for us this, 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 this day. Thank you once again for your word. Thank you for your word of counsel. Thank you so much, O oh Lord my God. Lord, I pray for them right now. Raise up your two hands to heaven. I just want to pray for you. I want to declare this word over you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh yes, Lord. I declare this, your word, over them right now. From Numbers, tw Numbers chapter 6. From verse number 23 and 24. Numbers chapter 6. As you go and depart, I declare over you in the name of Jesus. It says, speak to Aaron and his son, saying, this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. I'm releasing these blessings over your lives, over your situations, over your families, over your children, whether they are here or not, in the name of Jesus. I said, the Lord bless you. I said, the Lord keep you. I said, the Lord will cause his face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. And the Lord be gracious to you in the name of Jesus. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and the Lord grant you peace. You will know peace. You will have peace in the name of Jesus. Whatever storm that may be in your life right now, I speak peace to it. I say, peace be still. Peace regarding your home. Peace regarding your finances. Peace regarding your future. I speak peace to it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. We worship and we adore you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, I can hear you. Everybody said, Amen. Still in the attitude of worship. I want you to.